So thanks for having me, everybody, in the Plasticity team. This is our first foray into the world of uh, marine plastic recovery and also the circular economy of plastics. In the bigger picture, um, our contribution is quite small, but it starts to add up with scaling, as I'll explain as we go. So, uh, this is supposed to be a video. How do I get that to play? Righto. So this is a short clip of what a sea bin is. Just to put this talk into context, it collects plastic bottles, coffee cups, uh, microplastics, plastic bags, oil, fuel, polystyrene balls, any unsightly uh, surface pollutants and just litter in general. It can collect items like a five liter, a five liter container or it could get down to items two millimeters in size. So it's quite satisfying to see plastic nurdles being captured. This year we further developed the filter that's inside of the sea bin to catch microfibers. Uh, it's a bit more development needs to go into that before it become a commercial uh, item. This is some of the stuff that we've captured in 12 hours down in Darling Harbour in Sydney and it's absolutely amazing what is floating in the water. Thank you. Um, our clients are... Sorry. I uh, missed a slide. Anyway, um, with the sea bins, we started in marinas and ports and yacht clubs because there are no ocean storms and huge waves to deal with. The marinas, ports, and yacht clubs are the perfect client, and are the perfect client. And the sea bin can be a great investment in maintaining a healthy, cleaner waterways and a cleaner waterline. It also can help save in uh, manual uh, manual costs. The clients are removing marine litter from the waterways, preventing the plastic from entering our oceans, and it's also enabling us a better quality of life at no cost to ourselves. The sea bins, they're not designed for high volume marine debris, or at least not yet. The sea bins are designed for low to mid volume debris, and the filter holds up to 20 kilos at a time. I designed the sea bin using reverse engineering. It was the question was what weight can a person safely safely lift and hold by your side? And the answer was 20 kilos, 30 centimeters around, and 50 centimeters tall. Anything bigger becomes more becomes a bit more complicated and a bit less manageable by a single person. The CBIN technology involved uh, has evolved into much more than a floating garbage can, and, and this is the reason why. Our video went viral in early 2015. We had 7,000 views on the video. It went to 11 million overnight. From there, it jumped to about 50 million, then 100 million, and then more social medias picked it up and ran with it. One of the videos had uh, 87 million views alone. And so one year ago, I started to account. I didn't count anything less than 1 million views. And it's estimated that today, we have over a billion views of this video. And so from this viral attention also comes unwanted attention. The trolls, the haters come out. There's also concerned citizens who are not familiar with the marine environment and are made aware of a global issue, which is the ocean plastics. Some of the comments we received ranged from sea bins will not save the world, uh, yay for sea bins, we can now throw our waste in the water because the sea bins are going to suck it up. The most interesting one was uh, sea bins, sorry, well sea bins will suck in all the plankton in marinas and the whales are going to starve to death. Now, I'm not a marine scientist, but how much plankton, you know, could there be in, the, in, the, in a polluted corner of a marina? And I think the whales are pretty safe. Some of these people were just out to stir things up online and some people had genuine concerns and we realised that instead of provoking or laughing at them, we needed to address them. So our first action was to publicly acknowledge that the sea bins will not save the world because it's, it's true, that technology will not save the oceans and the only thing that will save the oceans is our own actions and our own um, responsibility for what we do. The next thing we did was hire marine scientists to see if we really were killing plankton. Turns out that because plankton are microscopic, 
the small amounts that could be found in a marina, they pass through the water pump and they're a little bit revved up, much like going on a roller coaster ride. Sometimes the sea bin will collect a few small bait fish and a few shrimp. The trade-off is absolutely negligible and it's something that we're working on as well to reduce the risk of this. One thing led to another and we realised that for all our problems to solving plastics in our oceans, the answer kept coming back to being education, being the main solution. So I took this photo of my partner swimming in the Mediterranean Sea. There isn't much fish in the Mediterranean, but it's always interesting to see what you can find floating around. So without lecturing anyone about things that they already know, because this is a pretty tough crowd, I want to give you an understanding of our philosophy when it comes to ocean plastics. So we're not into pointing fingers or blaming people. We're not into looking for an enemy to vilify. I've lost my spot, sorry. It's simply not productive to vilify somebody. We're all about taking responsibility for our own actions at all levels, finding solutions and then taking action. I mean, who is really to blame for this plastic bottle in the water? You know, is it the company who manufactured it? Is it the consumer who bought it? Was it disposed of properly? Did it fly out of a landfill or did someone simply drop it on the ground and walk away? because there's too many facets to this equation. From my opinion is that plastics is just an amazing material and the positives far outweigh the negatives because we have the connectivity from science, medical advancements, uh, simply having a, a great value of life. You know, plastic has enabled us all of this and much more. What I think is that plastic is just too far advanced for us and we're only just learning how to handle it properly be from, from our misuse of plastics. Products designed for single life, soon to be a thing of the past, giving the, the, the current trend in reusability, and, but there will always be some items. But I mean, honestly, why throw away something that has a value, can last forever and, be, can, reuse, and can be reused over and over again? It still comes back to education because even if you redesign the plastic, set up an optimised infrastructure for recycling, enable blockchain tracking, you're still going to have a throwaway culture and a littering culture to deal with. A biodegradable plastic bag can still choke a sea turtle. Our sea bin technology is made from rotationally moulded HDPE and we did this because it's robust, cost effective, recyclable and one day we can reuse the plastics that we're catching to build more sea bins. So you can imagine sea bins catching plastics to build more sea bins. In May this year, we started a sales campaign. We now have 254 units in the water in over 18 countries and we're on target to reach 500 units by the end of this year. The City of Paris, City of Paris has six units on trial in the Seine and the objective of the trial is to assist in cleaning up the waterways for the Summer Olympics, which is in six years. City of Dubai, they've got seven units on trial. Objective is to assist in maintaining a cleaner and more efficient waterfront. Governments are starting the topic of legislation because if we have the rubbish bins on land, why not have them in the water? For the last two years, we've been diligently collecting baseline data on what the sea bins have been collecting. Baseline data is the first of its kind in understanding the amount of microplastics in a densely populated upstream location. We've also made the decision to have this baseline data as open source. From the base data, we know that the cigarette butts are the number one item captured, followed by microplastics and then food wrappers. Our baseline data also gives us a daily average on what each sea bin is capturing. And so right now each sea bin collects on average three kilos of marine litter per day. Some locations it can be up to 60 kilos of debris or other locations down to a half kilo. With only 254 units in the water, it means we're removing three quarters of a tonne of marine litter every day or 273 tonnes per year. Now this is only 254 units, you know, it's very early stages and with the demand from over 150 unit, uh, countries, you can start to imagine the impact that 1,000 or 10,000 of these units can really have. 
We have a few goals here at Sea Bin Group. First goal is to get the sea bins into the water. The next step is to get off the dock because the best thing about our technology is that it's, uh, it's extremely simple in concept and extremely scalable. Another of our near future goals is to close the loop on the captured sea bin plastics, but that in itself is a challenge of gigantic proportions. The waste that is collected by marinas goes into waste management services available for each location. Each location is different. So I have a call to action for the people in this room. Removing marine litter from our waterways before it heads out to sea is a big job and we can't do it alone. Seabin Group needs your assistance in both the public and the private sector. So we're calling for partnerships and collaborations. The problem of marine litter and ocean plastic affects everything from tourism to fisheries to our general health. Our mission statement is to live in a world without the need for sea bins. We're working to do our souls out of business, but this is okay, because we'll always find something else to do. Thank you.